So when I cracked open Yasheng Huang's new book, The Rise and Fall of the East, I immediately realized that having him on the show to talk about that book would scratch this itch of mine that I have long had and allow me to get back into some of these deeper topics that I have set aside for too long. After all, it sets out, among many things, to identify the forces that formed the mind of contemporary China, the the political culture, and the many features of Chinese politics that defy easy explanation. It also takes things all the way up to the present and offers its own prognosis for China under Xi Jinping. I am not only excited to have him on the show to talk about this incredibly thought-provoking book, but I am just as excited that he is going to be our keynote speaker at the upcoming Next China Conference on November 2nd in New York City. Yasheng, welcome back to Seneca. It has been a long time. Yeah, thank you, Kaiser. I think last time we talked, the world was almost totally different from the world today. <laughs> it sure was. <laughs> and not for the worse, for sure. Um, <laughs> in terms of the claims that I made in my book, so East, the first letter uh, is uh, exam. Uh, specifically, I refer to the civil service exam system that was established in the 6th century. The basic point of my book is that if you sort of look at the three other components of the East, autocracy, stability, and technology, and technology here is about technology, but also you know economic growth and things like that, you can kind of trace these three dynamics to the exam system. Today's China is shaped by its past. What I don't do is defining the past as Confucianism, you know, values uh, uh, in those terms. I define the past in terms of mechanism. This kind of specific practice of cultivating human capital, of shaping the minds of the Chinese uh, people. You have this interesting idea that the modern equivalent of the kuzhu is the GDP metric. How is the GDP metric sort of equivalent to kuzhu? It is equivalent only in the performance measurement sense. I think the idea is that when you run a small system, but when you have a large organization, the imperative is to come up with consistent set of metrics. The Kerju system, it was the exam score, and it was objective. You either succeed on the test or you fail. Having consistency is very important because you promote the right people, you promote the right human capital. But the other element of it is that consistency also gives you legitimacy. Legitimizing effect is important because of incentives. If you don't believe in the system, you don't participate in it. There are a lot of criticisms of GDP system. I also used to <laughs> criticize GDP system until you see the alternatives. Let's throw away the GDP as, as the metric. Now, what do you have? You have loyalty to the ruler. <laughs> you have ideological <laughs> commitment. Uh, mass campaigns. Mass class campaign, struggles. <laughs> class struggles. Right. So I, I think that's my bottom line. If you accept autocracy as it is, you also have to accept a autocracy or a big organization has to pursue some sort of consistent metric. And GDP gives you the best consistency as you can ever have because everything else is a crapshoot, right? And look at what's happening in China today. Once the GDP as a metric is thrown out of the window, look at all these things misconduct and really just undesirable behavior on the part of the local officials. My larger premise is that once you have an autocracy, then a autocracy that presumes more consistent metric is a better autocracy than a autocracy that presumes inconsistent metric. Uh, and, and better yet, it is a metric that incidentally or intentionally benefits the ordinary citizen. My worry is that as ideology is declining, as economic growth is slowing down, my fear is that China is moving toward a more militaristic autocracy, similar to Latin America. And coupled with succession difficulties, 
I think it's going to become a very complicated situation going down the road. Yeah, I fear and it will. I don't have a crystal ball, but I fear for that scenario. 